imaging has been a, a sort of revolution in the field of uh, Alzheimer's disease for trying to better understand and detect um, the disease at, at its early stages. Um, MRI imaging, which of the different kinds of imaging, is really the most accessible and least expensive and also non-invasive method um, has proven to be uh, particularly useful in this domain. And one of the things that MRI is really helpful for, as we've learned more and more, is for tracking the disease over time, which has implications for uh, clinical trial use. Um, in addition, MRI tells us a whole bunch of other information outside of um, the information that were, uh, or outside of specifically related to Alzheimer's disease, but other factors that might be playing a role in why someone's having memory or thinking problems. For example, with MRI scans, um, in addition to seeing whether or not there's evidence of neurodegeneration in areas associated with Alzheimer's disease, we can look to see whether there's also cerebrovascular disease, for example, and Alzheimer's disease often is mixed with cerebrovascular disease. And so it's a, a really useful tool for us to better understand what's going on in someone's brain and allow us to rule out certain things as well as to help us figure out what's going on in individual patients. MRI both should be utilized clinically in, a, in um, a more quantitative way than how we currently use it, that we have tools nowadays where um, one can take an MRI image and learn a lot of information about it quantitatively using a variety of different software um, types of uh, programs. And that can tell us a lot more detailed information than just the sort of typical clinical visual read that we get. That's important as well, but um, doesn't necessarily tell us what this more kind of quantitative or advanced uh, imaging um, tells us. And so there actually really is an opportunity to begin to integrate this uh, into clinical practice in a way that takes advantage of where the field has gone over a number of years because most of these of the processing we do is software processing that can be done you know effectively uh, anywhere in terms of clinical trials um, uh, and it's um, clearly a very sensitive measure to the downstream injury of the different pathologies of Alzheimer's disease, but also for other neurodegenerative conditions. And as we're kind of moving earlier and trying to treat conditions before people have um, significant symptoms, the ability to check to, or to detect really subtle changes um, of brain injury um, it becomes really important because we can't really use memory tests and other things in people who are cognitively normal. Um, they're just not as sensitive. And so these kinds of measures with MRI allow us to see if we give someone this drug, is it actually really slowing down the degenerative change that's occurring in the brain? And so I think more and more so, um, incorporation of all these markers are going to be useful from a clinical trial perspective, although maybe that won't be practical in clinical practice in the future. But for clinical trials, I think we need these different assessments, and MRI is, I think, an integral part in, as an outcome measure in these studies.